Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool and today we're going to continue our Snap-on Toolbox tour with the hammer drawer. And this is actually uh, one of my favorite drawers because I'm constantly getting into this drawer for all sorts of different applications of, of projects. Um, <clears throat> so I actually have some pry bars in here as well as a plethora of different types of hammers. And I actually have more hammers than this, obviously, that's not terribly unusual, um, such as what's lined up on the floor. I've got larger, heavier hammers. I've got the sledges out in the garage. I've got multiple rubber hammers of different, uh, different hardnesses. But these are the main ones and the ones that I, uh, um, I don't necessarily keep uh, floating around. I, I like to keep a handle on these where they're where they're located. So let's take a, a tour through this. Um, now they're, the organization on this drawer is a little different. It's more of a stratified organization. What that means is the more used hammers rise to the top and the less used, ha used hammers work their way to the bottom. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one are the ones I've used most recently. Um, and in fact, some of the ones in the middle, I use the absolute most. Um, so let's start, go ahead and start on this side. Um, I have several of the uh, Snap-on Dead Blow Ball Peen hammers. Now these hammers are designed to stop when they, when they encounter something. Um, and not bounce. That's the opposite of, say, a quality, whoops, a quality, uh, let's say, a hammer that you might use um, as a blacksmith. Um, and the reason is you want the, if you're using it for pounding metal, say, on top of a, uh, um, an anvil or something, you want that rebound to be considerably more um, with a blacksmith hammer. And the reason, of course, is because you then can um, kind of conserve some of the energy by having the hammer bounce up off. So if this was my anvil, you know, this is going to bounce up, whereas the anvil needs to be super hard and um, of, a, of a proper kind of metallurgy that causes a huge rebound because that takes a lot of the, uh, the stress and the energy off of being, um, uh, or of pounding on a chunk of metal all day, whereas the dead blow is designed to stop and to provide all of the force directly onto the, um, the striking surface and not necessarily bounce off at all. So these are two wildly different kinds of hammers. And anyone who's done any blacksmith work knows that if you've got anything that doesn't bounce very hard, you've just doubled the amount of work because you've got to lift it as well as strike versus something like this hammer here, which it'll bounce off and bounce back up. And so I can continue striking. Um, so that's, that's this guy. Um, this is ball peen. It's the largest one Snap-on makes. I like the high vis if I can find it. Um, and uh, the, the snap-ons really have uh, um, kind of pushed hammer technology into the 21st century. It's pretty amazing that they actually spend the time trying to design these things. But as, as primitive and, um, I don't know, crude as the concept of a hammer, the reason we have so many is because it is probably, the, a hammer and a knife are probably, or a, a sharpen, sharpened surface for cutting, probably the two most important kinds of tools that exist. So um, that's why we take the hammer and we design all sorts of different variations because a striking tool um, has uh, just phenomenal potential that builds all of the other tools, all of the other places, all of the other machines. I mean, it kind of starts with a strike. So let's move on. Um, next one is a good rubber hammer. This is an S-wing here. Um, I really like S-wing hammers. And S-wing is a, uh, it's a US company. 
Um, been around, it says, since 1923. This is a 24 ounce um, rubber tipped hammer. It's got a little bit harder, a little bit softer um, head on it. Uh, honestly, that's, that's a, a pretty good go-to and a smaller version. Um, this is the 24, this is a 12 inch here and it uses um, kind of these plastic uh, caps. These are replaceable, a little bit shorter handle. Um, but still plenty of girth. I mean, it's a pretty beefy one and you can, if you choke up, you've got a, a swollen area that kind of catches it, um, catches your hand so it doesn't fly off uh, or fly out and then a smaller, um, smaller grip right down here. But anyway, these, I use these for everything, all kinds of projects. So the rubbery ones and the plasticky ones, super handy. Um, very inexpensive considering, um, and these things, um, the two West wings here, um, cover most of my, my, uh, soft hand or soft needs. Although I do have one, um, one other snap on kind of like this and, uh, a plastic headed, a couple of plastic headed handles, smaller dead blow ball peen. I, uh, this one's appeared before in my videos. This one um, is only because that was the smallest snap-on makes. Get this one out of the way too. You've seen these before. Um, so kind of the subtle um, work I do, that's what I go to is grab one of these. So um, we'll move through the last two snap-ons down here. <clears throat> this is a uh, plastic mallet, basically. Um, it does have uh, some beads, stainless steel shot probably inside. So again, it's a dead blow. These things do melt, you know, so you got to be a little bit careful when you use them on hot surfaces. Um, but this is a nice solid one for banging on metal. Um, and then this is a uh, um, kind of a rubber and a plastic. So it, it supplements my S wings and these can unscrew and be replaced. Um, but basically, this is a good solid handle. I love these things for, I love that Snap-on took the time to make the kind of the integrated grippy surface. They've spent time with the size of it, the way it fits into your hand, um, and then the weighted head. Um, so basically, uh, this one's a 24 ounce. Um, again, super handy when you're not wanting to damage any of the metal or you want to be a little subtle. So I use these for a lot of different jobs. Um, and it's kind of surprising when you think I need to bang on something, but I don't want to destroy it or dent it or chip it or smash it or bend it. Um, that's where these come in. So believe it or not, the, the plastic hammers are probably the most used. Um, then I drop down, this is a small Fiskars kind of a sledgehammer. Fiskars uses a lot of uh, polymers, plastics, um, non-metal uh, or non-wood in their designs. They're kind of a pioneer, innovative for this sort of stuff. But what I like about this, this is almost like a drilling hammer. Um, it provides a huge amount of force um, for a, such a small form factor. Um, and this is, this is a Fiskars Pro here. Can't remember the weight three pounds, two and a half pounds, something like that. Um, but with a small handle, uh, you can just do an awful lot. Huge head, this is nice tapered, and for a little bit of finer work, if you're trying to bend metal or, or cause a, um, um, a really specific hit uh, to have impact versus, you know, something kind of giant here. Um, they, they call it an ISO core, that's vibration reduction system. Um, but you really don't generate, you're not swinging this like a big sledgehammer. So I haven't found any problem with the, with the vibration on this thing. Um, and, and they pioneer other things. I mean, this is a, this handle is screwed on to this plastic shaft. It, it seems to work. Fiskars is really pushing this stuff. And, and, uh, I guess I kind of like the idea of, uh, of new technology entering the hammer world. Um, so I don't mind Fisker. Um, next one <clears throat> I'm going to go into is the classic ball peens. And I've got a couple in here. Um, these are both the S wings. <clears throat> They're solid metal handles all the way down. Um, and the S wings, um, are, are just, just bomb proof, American made solid hammers. Um, this one, um, 
I used to it used to be my go-to till I got that small blue point. Um, and now I mostly go with that, the blue point. Um, but this one still arrives, uh, you know, in my hand when I'm doing certain kinds of work. Um, it's just a good, excellent design. I have older craftsmen, um, kind of, you know, near and dear to my heart type of uh, um, historical ball peens. Um, but I seem to go to this one more, more and more. Um, there's kind of an anti-shock rubberized handle that Estwing uses. It's a solid shaft. Um, they've got just beautiful finish work on their um, their hammers. Um, so for an American company still producing these, you know, give the Estwings a look. Um, they are heavy and they do have quite a bit of the uh, um, the handle providing the weight of the overall weight of the thing. See if I can get it to balance. It's about right here somewhere. Um, and that weight, some people, you know, the hammer aficionados might complain, you know, too much of it's in the handle and not in the head, but it also will last probably for the next 500 years if I take care of it. So I've got a couple of ball peens from Estwing. Um, then I'm going to move across. I, I have a bunch of framing hammers. Um, and my two favorites... Um, Oh, I love that sound. I don't know which one's doing that. One of these has got a... Which one? Beautiful sound. It's over here somewhere. Just the sound of quality metal. Just that, that tone when you hit it. I don't know if you can hear it. But anyway, um, I have this and I have a larger S-Wing that's uh, um, an older design. And... This S-Wing here, I, I really like these. A framing hammer, bigger work. This is a 22 ounce here. This one here is a um, 19 ounce, a little smaller. This one here is a 15 ounce. They've got a few features. They hold nails, so if you're building, um, it's easy to uh, uh, drop a nail in here. There's a magnet that holds it, and then it allows you to set the nail and then pound it in. Um, they're designed for pretty significant use as a pry bar. Um, this one's flat. This one's a little more curved. You see the difference there? So Milwaukee's kind of pushing the limits here. I don't find the Milwaukee handle at the moment quite as comfortable, and the reason is that this handle is really um, kind of rectangular. And my hand, it's kind of the same I, I've talked about with hunting knives. You know, my hand doesn't make a rectangle. That's a rectangle right there, you know, versus a little bit more round. So the, you can see the S-Wing handle here um, provides a little bit rounder grip. But I like the innovation. I mean, Milwaukee just doesn't seem to have any rules. It's going to say, what do we need to do? You know, this... There's, there's kind of the controversy over, do I want something? Maybe this one's a little easier. Um, I've got, this is a mild, um, you know, but still pr fairly abrasive um, cap on the, on the striking surface. This is smooth, and this is like huge, gigantic. That's like a cheese grater here. Um, so they're, they're playing around with ways to do things. Um, you know, this one's also got the magnet. You can see they both have shafts magnets to hold nails to get it started. The nail head drops down into this slot right here. And that slot then provides the striking surface, snap-on, I mean snap-on, <laughs> Freudian slip, I guess. Um, S-Wing um, has a nail puller here as well as a nail puller here. Milwaukee forces the nail puller to to kind of just remain at the end there. I imagine they're going to get kind of creative. Um, but then these aren't decon hammers, deconstruction hammers. These are framing hammers. The hammers. These are con for construction. They're long, so you have to basically have hammer skill in order to hit the nail. If you give somebody an amateur or something, you know, one of these things, um, they're going to smash a bunch of wood before they, they nail the hammer or nail the nail. And the reason is, you're way out here. It's, it's like an axe or, you know, or a long hatchet. Are you that good? And in fact, um, once you get used to it, uh, you can really drive the nails in with very little effort using a framing hammer. But 
I often have help, so I might start somebody with a little bit smaller hammer, but still has the features of the framing hammer. Um, and this is an S-Wing framing hammer, 20 ounce. It's got the beautiful leather washer handle. Um, I like this. Uh, it's kind of too nice to use, but it's so classic. Uh, kind of just reminds me of the S-Wing hatchet. Um, so that's why it's at the bottom. I don't use it that much. Um, but anyway, this is a good one. The Decon hammers, and I've got several Decon tools, um, but this is the DeWalt here. And this space here is designed to grab a 2x4 and twist it or break it. So it's not just a regular hammer. This one's designed um, both to build and to destroy. So it's got a bunch of different features on it designed, um, designed in for both directions. Um, again, it's, it's taken the Milwaukee narrowness and, and uh, kind of made it a little bit worse. Um, but it's a, it's a good decon hammer. Um, so if you've got to go in and, and make some significant adjustments to, a, to a, a wooden structure, this is a good one because it both builds and it destroys. Um, uh, it does have uh, the nail notch here, but it does not have the nail um, uh, holding point because it's not really designed as a framing hammer. It's sort of an all-purpose, you know, you get, go into a weird situation, not sure what you're going to end up with. Um, and a lot of things have this kind of decon area. Uh, I don't know if I've got a, enough of a piece of wood, I don't see one handy. Um, but this actually is a pretty good lever arm if you need to twist out 2 by 4s um, kind of deframing instead of framing. Um, but it's interesting to use. Um, uh, this is a body hammer, snap-on. The reason this one rose to the top is I was actually doing some work on a uh, on an RV, and you know they're made of kind of a soft metal, aluminum sheeting. So um, you know, anytime you ding them or something, you just kind of straighten it out. So uh, this is most of my uh, body work um, tools right here. One hammer. I had some dollies and stuff like that and I just found I didn't use them much or I would just use another hammer or something else on the other side so I didn't have to have too much um, just sitting around of heavy metal and not using it. Um, this is a brass hammer. Brass hammers are used when you don't want to actually you know damage harder metal. Um, kind of usually if you're if you're worried about things like that you move from the hammer or from the material hardness down a level for the hammer. And if you get into soft stuff, you know, that's where you end up with the plastics or rubbers, but this is a brass one. I don't use this a whole lot, but um, this is a shop iron professional. Um, but when you need a brass hammer, this is it. And brass doesn't spark. And steel, you can get to spark on steel or on other metals, iron. Um, so sometimes you want to be a little bit careful and make sure you don't. Um, kick off sparks or, or metal, this starts to deform. They're kind of sacrificial type hammers. Um, and they're not cheap either. So it's important if you've got one to take care of it. Um, I've got a couple of tack hammer. I've got a plum here. And this is actually one of Estwing's little five ounce job here. It's got the ability to both grab and, and uh, remove different kinds of tacks, small tips. This one does... Um, some got some glue still on it from the last job but anyway this one has a few more features this has got two like striking heads plus the uh, ability to grab and, and hold tacks you know if i was gonna um tap them in these come in handy little tiny things for small jobs upholstery especially um so good to have this is more of an antique i picked up and then refinished and then kept this one's actually available at home depot for like five bucks right now um, but it's a good S wing. And then uh, one more small claw hammer. Um, I do like claw hammers, obviously, for doing claw hammer type work, um, but usually I grab something a little bit bigger um, if I'm pounding in nails. I don't do a lot of small nails unless I'm going after um, more what the, uh, what the tack hammers are good for. Um, and then I've got some pry bars over here of various sizes. I'll start with this crescent. This is an indexing crescent. Um, this is a little bit bigger than my snap-on. 
which let me see if I can grab that guy here and show you somewhere in my drawer. Uh, where did I put it? Huh. Anyway, I thought I'd thought it'd be easy to grab. Um, maybe I've got it out in a bag ready for a job. Anyway, I've got a smaller, you saw it in another video, smaller little crap or a snap on indexing. Crescent makes an affordable one. Um, pretty durable so far, it seems. You can bang on it pretty hard, um, but it allows an awful lot of good, um, good function. And I have a larger crescent. Let me grab that. It's a um, designed both as a nail puller and a pry bar. Um, it's this crescent here, super uh, beefy. I think this appeared in another video. Um, but the problem with this one is it doesn't really fit in my drawer with the hammers. I mean, it's pretty significant. So again, it's one of those wall trophies. I tend to hang it on the wall and, and uh, grab it when I need it. And then I've got a couple of other smaller pry bars, different kinds. Um, this is an S-Wing uh, an here, kind of a classic that they make that's you know available at the local big box. Um, good for nails, good for spreading things, pounding on it. It's pretty simple. This is an old, um, <clears throat> is this a Proto? I can't remember uh, what brand this is, but anyway, good, useful. Um, when you need a pry bar, um, you've already got a situation in front of you, so you, you've lost control. Now what you need is a bar that will fit in or allow you to do whatever it is that you're after. I need to grind that. I'm getting some mushrooming here. You throw that on the bench grinder and round it out. Um, thin ones, you know, these are all metal. Um, this Dasco, um, great for tile work, window work, um, sometimes leveling appliances if you need to screw legs, things like that. Um, there's an old blue point here, just a good solid pry bar. Some of these also fit into automotive genres um, as well. Um, but that is my hammer drawer and it's basically uh, the kind of the, I, I store some larger things where I've lost, uh, I don't have enough room upstairs for these so they end up in the hammer drawer. So anyway this is, uh, this is the hammers and I think hammers and knives um, are, are kind of the two classics. I don't know if I mentioned this. Big dead blow 45 ounce. Um, you can hear the hear the um, flu or the the sand or steel shot or whatever's in this. Um, good solid inexpensive dead blow there. Um, this is, I think is good for furniture when you have to bang some of the furniture together. Um, the larger it is, the less you really have to strike with because you've got you know Newton's law. You're putting 45 ounces into motion versus trying to do that. Um, you know, with something half the weight. Um, nice surface, so, you know, if you're working on furniture, snapping things together before you glue it or screw it down, um, this is a good one for it. Anyway, that is my hammer drawer. I uh, hope you found something useful in all of this. And with that, Doc out.